All right, everybody, welcome to Friday Night Sports. I'm Stan Gravois, and tonight we start off with national news, and that is the roller coaster ride that is the NFL dispute. Well, that thing is up and down, up and down. At the beginning of the week, we thought that there was a light at the end of the tunnel. Obviously, we were waiting for the owners to meet on Thursday afternoon. Looked like everybody liked the agreement that was happening. Then in the middle of the week, we actually get Drew Brees' name thrown in there as one of a few NFL players who are against the situation of being tagged as a franchise player twice. Now, Drew Brees immediately got on social media and said, this is not going to be the stopping block of this situation. And it hadn't been, and it was not. And then on Thursday night, the owners get together in Atlanta and they vote 31 to zero, so unanimously, to ratify this agreement. Then it gets turned over to the players. Now, if you say 31 and there's 32 teams, Oakland did not vote. Now, Oakland, obviously, with Al Davis, has its problems of its own, but the other 31 owners unanimously voted to accept this agreement. They sent it to the players last night. We thought things were going really well. Then all of a sudden, the players feel like they're being kind of duped just a little bit on this situation, that everything that they thought was in the agreement may not be necessarily the way the owners have proposed it to them. So now it's getting kind of sticky. Last night it was actually very emotional. We wake up this morning on Friday morning and find out that maybe it's not near as bad as what we thought. And these players are just going to make sure that they read through the entire thing before they pass it through. The big sticking point seems to be recertification as a union by the players, which the owners hope happens by Tuesday. They actually put a deadline date of Tuesday for them to recertify. If they get that done, then it looks like we're going to be playing football pretty soon. One thing we do know for sure, there will be no Hall of Fame game. The uh, the Rams were supposed to take on the Bears in the annual Hall of Fame game over in Canton, Ohio, and that is not going to happen this year. That has been axed, and we'll see what's going to happen as far as it uh, plays out for the first preseason date for the rest of the league teams. That may even be in jeopardy, as once again, we're on Friday, and uh, we don't have a resolution at our airing time, and hopefully it's something that can be ironed out over the weekend, maybe by Monday or Tuesday. Now, the owners are opening up their facilities this weekend, so there are some players that might kind of start slipping into the facilities to either meet with coaches or get workouts, but until it is signed by the players, there is not going to be an end to this thing. Most people believe that it's just a matter of time. Certainly we hope because we want to see some football happen, but at this point, no end. And just sticking with football just a little bit on the professional level, Reggie Bush actually has his Heisman Trophy. There was a lot of speculation of where Reggie Bush's Heisman Trophy, his copy, not the copy that goes to USC. USC actually returned their copy to New York. But his copy of the Heisman Trophy was at the San Diego Sports Museum in the Hall of Champions, and they kind of had it hidden in the cellar. They never displayed it, but this past week they gave it back to Reggie Bush's family, and it seems that Reggie Bush's family is not giving it back to New York. They are going to hold on to it. Now, Reggie Bush has came out and publicly said that uh, he, uh, he, he turned away the award as far as uh, his problems with USC, but it doesn't look like he's giving back the trophy, so we'll see how that all pans out. Heck, we're going to have to see if Reggie Bush is even a New Orleans Saint after all of this stuff has ended. Dropping down to collegiate sports, LSU was put on probation this week. Not a good situation, but obviously not as bad as it could have been. DJ McCarthy, an ex-coach over at LSU, uh, hid some things when he was recruiting a young player. They were put on probation for one year by the NCAA. And uh, it's a situation now where they are not going to have as many kids on campus for recruiting purposes. As a matter of fact, I think we have a graphic that actually shows some of those things as far as the recruitment problems. It's ex-coach DJ McCarthy improperly arranged for transportation and housing for former uh, lineman Akeem Hicks. Ironically enough, Akeem Hicks has never played it down at LSU. He's not even at LSU anymore. So they were slapped with a one-year probation. Means that the NCAA is going to be looking over their shoulder at all costs. Uh, now, LSU did have a self-imposed reduction of two scholarships, which the NCAA will hold up. They also have a 10% reduction in official visits and recruiting calls. So uh, that's pretty much the extent of the punishment to them. So not too, too bad. There are a lot of people around the nation 
at it, kind of wondering why LSU maybe didn't get a severe penalty as, say, in Ohio State or USC. But quite honestly, what they did was not near as severe as what those schools did. SEC is having media days over in Alabama right now, and the coaches got together and they came up with their preseason all-conference team and there were a couple of Tigers that were named to those teams. Now they have a first team, a second team, and a third team. In all of this, LSU only had one person put on the first team. That is Mo Claiborne, defensive back. He is a junior. Remember, he had a lot of interceptions last year. Second team offense, Reuben Randall, also a junior. He is a wide receiver, a really good wide receiver from North Louisiana. On the second team defense, three players named Barkovius Mingo, a defensive lineman, Ryan Baker, a linebacker, and Tyron Matthew, a sophomore defensive back who is tough as nails. He's going to be a good one. He is from St. Aug High School. Third team, a couple of guys made the third team, Alex Hurst, a junior offensive lineman, and on defense, Sam Montgomery, a sophomore defensive lineman. And Jason, if you could, if you go to this next graphic, it's pretty interesting because it shows the breakdown of the schools in the S. SEC and those players on those teams that got voted to the SEC all-conference preseason team. Look at Alabama, 13 total players. Arkansas, 14 total players. But on first team, you see Alabama has seven, Arkansas three, and you go right down the line. Auburn, seven players that are named to it. Now, remember, this is first, second, and third team. Florida with six. Georgia with nine. Kentucky with three. Uh, it's been a long time since Kentucky has actually had more people on the first team preseason all-conference team than what LSU has had, but that has happened this year. Remember, LSU with only one. Down to South Carolina. South Carolina has four, and they have nine total. Problem is, is that it's kind of distributed across the board for those guys. Tennessee. Unbelievable. And that was a time when Tennessee was at the top. Now they have one on the first team, one on the third team, and that is it, folks. Only two total for the University of Tennessee. So, you know, that doesn't say a whole lot because it is preseason, but let's hope LSU proves a lot of people wrong and we have more first team members than what we did before the season started. Got to take a commercial break. When we come back, we're going to look at some high school sports in our area. Ellen finally has a head coach. We'll talk about that after these messages. <laughs> 